Today we're going to talk about the bacteriophage lambda, which has a slightly more complicated life cycle than one might expect. Okay, lambda can undergo the lytic growth, which is characteristic of ages like P1, which we already described, but it can also, which leads to lysis of the cells, but it can also lysogenize them, is a process whereby it becomes part of the host chromosome and is replicated along with it. And as a result of this lysogenic process, it does occasionally carry out what's called specialized transduction, which is different from the generalized, which we saw with phage P1. Okay, so lytic versus lysogenic life cycle, this sort of illustrates both of those, where the lambda will infect an E. coli cell, inject its DNA into the cell, and at that point, it has the option of either undergoing the normal sort of lytic growth in which you form new phage particles, which then lice the cell, and then leading to, again, spread of the infection from the lysed cell to other cells nearby. That's the lytic pathway where the object is to create more phage, which can then go and lice other cells. Now, as an alternative, lambda has the option of actually joining up or integrating itself into the E. coli chromosome. Once there, it exists as what's called a prophage, and it can be replicated passively along with the chromosome for indefinitely, really. And those are the lysogens. E. coli cells or bacterial cells that contain phage as part of their genome are called lysogens. Okay, so the life cycle of lambda, which we will discuss in a little bit of detail, the genome itself is linear when it's in the phage head. So it's actually injected into the cell in the form of a, of a double-stranded molecule, which is linear, which has sticky ends on the ends, which are called cosites. So these single-stranded ends will then form a circle because they're complementary to each other, and they will be sealed by host DNA ligase at the very earliest stages in the lambda replication process. So this circular form is like so, and it can then undergo replication, or else it can integrate into the chromosome of the cell. Okay, so here's a slightly more elaborate picture of lambda replication, where the virus, of course, attaches to the host cell, then the DNA is injected into the cell. The cause sites will then um, form a circle and be ligated by the host cell ligase. So at that point, the cell has the option, or the lambda has the option, of either going through what's called lytic growth, where we're going to produce more phage, or integrate itself into the chromosome to become a lysogen. So we're going to talk about the lytic part of the life cycle first, and then come back to the lys lysogenic form, which is ultimately what can lead to transduction. Okay, so remember, lytic is what kills the cell. Lysogen is when the phage incorporates itself into the chromosome, forming a prophage. That process is called integration, requires a lambda protein called integrase, and it can also be reversed, and we'll talk about that a little more later. So temperate is another word for phages. Our cells are phages that can lysogenize the cell, and lambda is an example of a temperate phage, or one that can be anyway. Okay, so after the genome forms a circle, the decision is made whether to lyse the cell or lysogenize it. This involves lambda and go to regular regulatory proteins. Okay, so we're first going to decide in this arm of the pathway to lyse the cell and talk about the integration process later. So if we're going to go through lytic replication, the next thing that happens is what's called the theta form of DNA replication. This is good old regular DNA replication, and the, the phage is going to first produce more circles. So theta is what you think of as a usual kind of bidirectional DNA replication, where replication starts at an origin, and then the rep you form two replication forks that move in opposite directions around the circle, eventually leading to the production of two more circles. So the theta form of replication produces more circles than is the first part of replication during the lambda life cycle, the lytic life cycle. Okay, so after you've got some circles formed, there is a switch to what's called the rolling circle form of replication. And the rolling circle replication is what produces the long double-stranded DNA molecules that are used by the virus to package 
phase DNA into new virions. These long molecules are called concatenomers, and what they are is long molecules that contain multiple copies of the phase genome punctuated by the cause sites that are going to be used as information for packaging of these molecules into virions. Okay, rolling circle replication is represented here. You don't need to know the details of the process, just what the ultimate outcome is. It's initiated by a single-stranded NIC at a particular location in the genome, and that leads to the formation of a free 3' end and a free 5' end. So replication starts at the 3' end, replacing one strand of the circle, leading to the formation of linear molecule that extends out from the circle and is replicated, well, the a lagging strand is replicated by host DNA polymerase. So what you're, general, what you're forming here is long molecules, which are multiple genomes in length, and that's the form of the DNA that is going to be used by the immature virions for packaging into new virions. Okay, so what this looks like ultimately is con con concatomeric molecules, and this is the form of DNA that's recognized to be packaged. The cause sites are critical in this process. The DNA will not be packaged without the cause sites present. And for reasons that are going to be clear in a little while, this is why Lambda does not do generalized transduction, because the phage will not accept bacterial DNA. It's extremely picky about what it will package. Anything between two cause sites will be packaged, but the cause sites must necessarily be there for that recognition process to occur. So meanwhile, the phage has are accumulating immature ones while the DNA is replicating. So the cause sites on the DNA bind to proteins that are associated with the immature phage heads, and they then join together for the um, packaging reaction. So what happens is you've got your DNA. It interacts with proteins at the entry point of the empty capsid, and then DNA is then threaded in there by a little molecular machine that does this process. And it, the process continues until another cause site is encountered. So packaging goes from cause site to cause site. And when the second cause site is, in, is encountered, the DNA is cleaved. And then the immature virion pat capsid can then go along and then be matured by the addition of its tail, etc. So the cause sites are critical for this reaction. No cause, no packaging, no generalized transduction. Okay, so what happens is after that, within the cell, you're separately assembling tails and, and on base plates, etc. And those are assembled inside the cell with the capsid to form the mature phage. So this is the maturation process by which the tails and extra proteins are added. Then lysis of the cell occurs as a result of a phage encoded endolysin, which is lysozyme. So the enzyme chews open the cell wall so the phage can escape. And this, of course, will set up a new round of infection. So this is the same as the life cycle of phage we saw before. You inject the DNA, early proteins, replication, formation of new vi virions, virus particles, lysis, and then the cycle continues. So that's the lytic infection is normally done by many different phages, and lambda being one of them. So which of the following are lambda cause sites needed for the lytic portion of the life cycle? Formation of circles for theta replication, packaging of DNA, initiation of DNA replication, A and B, A, B, and C. Okay, so the answer is D. A and B are true. You need it for formation of circles and also for packaging of phage DNA. You do not need it for the replication origin. It's not, it is not, does not serve as a replication origin. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the beginning where the choice is made between lysis and lysogeny. Now, a great deal is known about the molecular details of this process, but so we're only going to skirt the high points. So what happens is, of course, you inject your phage DNA into the cell. You get circularization by means of um, annealing and ligation of the cause sites. And then instead of going on to production of theta replication circles, 
Instead, the choice is made to actually insert the phage DNA into the chromosome as the beginning of the lysogenic cycle. Okay, so this is a reaction that is encoded by a phage encoded protein called integrase. And so as a result of the integrase reaction, the phage is inserted into the chromosome where it will then reside in a lit in a um, inactive or prophage state and it can remain there almost indefinitely or it can come out again to resume lytic infection. Now as a lysogen, the phage is, does not express most of its genes, but it does encode a repressor which keeps it in, in its repressed condition or the lysogenic state. So the process of induction is a reversal of that process where the phage will resume lytic growth. This is catalyzed also by a phage encoded protein called excis or excision, excision protein. Here's a diagram of what that looks like. And in terms of um, specialized transduction, this is important that it occurs between a specific DNA sequence called ATP that's part of the phage genome and a specific sequence called ATB, which is part of the E. coli genome. Now, ATB occurs at a particular location in the E. coli genome between the gal and biogenes. So lambda will insert at ATB only at ATB and nowhere else in the E. coli chromosome. And this is why transduction can only carry certain genes. It can only carry gal or bio because that, those are next to the at B site. So the integrase reaction is essentially a crossover between the bacterial chromosome and the phage genome, which leads to structure where the phage is now part of the chromosome. You have a hybrid site between um, what was at B and at P and a hybrid site between what was at P and at B between the gallon biogenes and the lysogen. Lambda phage DNA is in its circular form in the virion during theta replication while in the bacterial chromosome during packaging. During theta replication. Okay, so the prophage state itself, as I said before, the prophage can exist, persist indefinitely, and mostly is transcriptionally repressed. There it's just replicated passively along with the E. coli chromosome. But if it does contain extra things such as transposons or virulence factors, these can be expressed. Okay, the prophase is considered latent because it's not dead. It can come back out and resume lytic growth when conditions change. So that decision to resume lytic growth is called induction. Okay, so this is an exact reversal of the process whereby the phage went into the host chromosome in the first place. The, the ends of, of the, of the um, phage are brought together and excised, essentially, by the activity of the excision, excision protein. Right, so the, usually, naturally, the prophage excision is precise, meaning that the actual initial situation is restored, degenerated, intact at B and intact at P, and the full-length phage is now in a circular form and ready to undergo replication to continue the lytic growth cycle. Now that doesn't lead to transduction either, but it does resume lytic growth with the production of new phage, etc. Okay, the process of prophase excision is represented here, where the lambda is sitting in the chromosome adjacent to the gal gene, gal, gal gene cluster really. So the signal is given to resume lytic infection. The circle is reformed by precise excision and restoration of the intact at B and at P sites that initiated the integration in the first place. The lambda forms a circle and escapes and now can resume lytic infection. So it will go on to theta replication, etc., and the host cell will then undergo lysis. What leads to transduction ultimately is an imprecise, incorrect excision. In this case, let's look at lambda sitting next to gal where the signal is given to resume growth and the phage somehow gets it wrong. It forms a circle, but instead of having the intact lambda as a circle, it mistakenly includes the adjacent gal genes along with most of lambda 
but leaves some of the lambda phage DNA behind. So the circle that's produced is defective, which the DG stands, like, stands for gal, defective gal, because it carries the gal genes. It has a lot of lambda DNA, but it's left some of the lambda behind in the chromosome. So when that phage, which can be produced because all the phage genes are there in the cell, you can produce phage, but those phage will be missing an important part of the lambda genome, but at the same time will be carrying part of the gal, will be, will be carrying the gal genes. And those can then, that those phage, which are defective, can still set up an infection in a new host cell, meaning that they can insert their DNA into a new host cell. But once there, the cell cannot be lysed because important lambda genes are not present. Instead, the defective phage can integrate at the gal location or the at p at b location in the in the genome of the new host cell. So they will carry gal along with part of lambda and therefore transduce gal and form a defective integrated prophage at least some of the time. So that's specialized transduction, because only those genes can be carried. The lambdalytic infection differs from lysogeny in that only the lysogenic infection involves injection of the phage DNA into the bacterial cell, formation of concatenates, integration of phage DNA into the bacterial chromosome, production of phage heads, transcription of phage genes. So the answer is C, integration of phage DNA into the bacterial chromosome. Which of the following packages DNA into a protein particle by a head flow mechanism? Phage P1, phage lambda, F factor. Answer A. Good.